The Land Beyond the North Apollo liked to stay at Delphi, where now stood his majestic temple and the sacred oracle. Yet neither did they forget Delos, the island of his birth. And above all, he did not forget the promise to his mother, Leto, had made before she bore him. For this reason, it was not long before a gleaming temple built by Apollo stood out among the other sacred monuments of the island. But from time to time, he would leave Greece to travel to the mythical light land beyond the north, where his mother now lived. Apollo's journeys to this enchanting land were long but wonderful. Mounted on a winged chariot drawn by two grey snow-white swans, he would travel high above the clouds, leaving Greece far behind him. As he travelled farther and northwards, he would catch sight of the first snows from on high covering the mountain peaks like white caps. Gradually, the snow would grow thicker until everything beneath Apollo's chariot seemed to be covered by a white sheet. But above the clouds where Apollo flew, the weather was always spring-like, and the great swans would draw the chariot onwards swiftly and tirelessly. Finally, even further to the north, the snows would begin to thin out, and far beyond the pole itself, golden sunbeams would shine through the clouds, shedding their light upon an enchanting land. This was the land of the Hyperboreans, the land beyond the north. Here was a country of eternal spring, brightly colored and bathed in a cool light, a region echoing with the tinkle of, fa- of flashing waters and the sweet songs of iridescent birds. As soon as the golden haired god descended, descended from his chariot and set foot upon the green grass, the birds would burst into a frenzied song of welcome and flutter it among the branches and the golden shafts of sunlight. So beautifully did they, sm- they sing their melody, almost rivaled <laughs> the heavenly notes that Apollo plucked from his life. But at the same moment in distant Greece, Clouds would darken the sky. Cold and rain would follow, for the god of light had left his homeland and dark winter was coming in his stead. Hardened around their fires, people would patiently await the return of Apollo and the winter's end. When the god of light came back, he would chase away the dark days with his golden golden beams and bring the warm and the sparkling spring. Then people would hold great feasts to worship the god and sing songs about the sun, the life, the light and the joy. 